three minutes late. Okay. okay, good afternoon. Uh, the date is uh, Tuesday, March 19th. The time is 3 p.m. I'd like to call to order the March meeting of the Norwalk Fire Commission. We have a uh, quorum present with uh, Commissioner DeStruz and Mayor Rilling. Um, and uh, we should, we'll begin now. <laughs> uh, the first item on the agenda is, uh, oh, hold on a second, please. First item on the agenda yes. is the acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner DeStruz. Are there any corrections, deletions, or omissions? Not from, uh, not from me. Okay. So all in favor of approving the minutes as submitted? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item three, there are no action items. Uh, item four, uh, fire chief's uh, report, budget report, chief. Yes, good afternoon, mayor. Um, so we're eight months into this year and we're actually uh, doing a little bit better than I thought we would be at this time of the year. The available balances in the salary and the overtime expenses um, obviously, the overtime expenses are going up, but there's more than enough salary expenses uh, to cover that. Uh, as we uh, projected through the end of the year, we should be all right um, to cover all that. <clears throat> so we're at 57.9% of wages in the firefighting account and at 66.2. And the overall budget is 60 point eight where we should be at 66.6 6. so mm -hmm. we're doing uh we're doing very well as far as staying in line and i do want to mention one thing compared to last year our sick time balance is actually less than it was last year yes at this time i was going to ask about so, that <laughs> yeah we're at Actually, Glad to hear uh, that. at this point last year, we were 1,364 shifts. This year is 1127. So we're 237 sick time the last year. Uh, Very good to hear. Very nice. Injuries, uh, 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 injuries on the other hand went up a little bit. Right. Those are injury on duty. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, actually, I'd, uh, if so that's my, my if, report. No, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief. Actually, if, if my math is correct, the injury uh, line item, uh, it's significantly higher, 116% versus the prior year. Uh, yes. 600, 620 versus 287. Right. So I was wondering, is that and anything that we could have done to, uh, I guess we, we, I guess we can't anticipate these things. Injury is injury, but uh, I'm always concerned that our, our firefighters are subject to to injury. And I know it's not for lack of training because we certainly get a lot of it. Uh, but I, I wish we could spend some time and try to figure out. Uh, I mean, 116 uh, percent worries me. Well, some of the injuries do occur during training. That's the problem. I mean, mm -hmm. you cannot not train. Right. And the training is intense sometimes. Um, and, and the other times are just natural occurrences that you slip or you fall or something falls on you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be fighting a fire, have a ceiling come down on top of you. It's just, like you say, you cannot predict what's going to happen as far as injuries go. Right. Um, we do have the our, our wellness program and the trainer works with a lot of people. Um, I don't know. I think that she's doing a good job and I think it could be, uh, could be even higher if you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So people are working out, you know, so. Is it, uh, is it also it's unknown? Can we pinpoint it to a specific section of the year? Because I know we're looking at a rolling year period, but uh, are most of these occurring November? If you look at the, the well, 
the yeah. numbers are all different. I mean, if you look at it month over month, um, like in uh, the first month is March, right? It's 95 for this year, 23 last year. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. significantly higher every month. Yeah, um, yeah. Until the last few months where it gets, it's, it's coming down. The number mm -hmm. of incidents are coming down. Right. Uh, it, comparing it to the prior year, uh, actually this year, it's 52 uh, in March compared to uh, prior year, 23. 23, right. Uh, well, uh, yeah, my, my concern is for the wellness of the, of the staff, and that's the reason why I raised it, because uh, if, if the commission can do something to help uh, prevent and make it safer for our, for our men and women to train and firefight, uh, uh, that I'm all for it. So you know, if it's a, if it's an item, if it's a matter of budgeting, if we don't have a certain equipment that, that is needed, uh, you know, safer boots or um, I don't know, I'm, I'm just babbling. But 116 uh, percent did uh, did raise a flag for me. No, I understand, and I appreciate your concerns. I wish it was something as simple as, oh yeah, you know, we need better gloves, or we need, uh, mm -hmm. you know. We do have good equipment as far as that goes, and we are on top of whether or not there's any failures um, with the equipment. It's just other, you know, a sprain. Uh, you're lifting. Mm -hmm. We're going a lot of EMS calls. We're lifting up patients and trying to get them mm -hmm. downstairs, and you know, mm -hmm. it's just in the course of doing business. Uh, just one thing I I would uh, recommend is to yeah and you may already do this uh just look and see if there's any commonality if there's any common theme somebody slipping and falling on ice uh as you say lifting somebody up and having a you know their back uh hurt or something along those lines just see if there's anything that jumps off the page at you uh regarding the type of injury um and and how it occurred uh and, and then if if there is uh if there's nothing uh that's one thing but if there is something that you know maybe a, a percentage of the injuries occurred by slip and fall uh, maybe we can look at that and see with uh, our risk manager if there's anything that we can uh pinpoint and try to try to work on thank you Mayor. yes we do get a we do get a um we do get a report from craig uh just regarding all the types of injuries mm -hmm. uh, i believe it comes out maybe two times a year I don't have it now in front of me, but mm. when it comes out, I will uh, let the commissioners know. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, thank it. you for keeping us uh, well within budget. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Assistant Fire Chief of Administration, Assistant Chief Conte. Good afternoon. Um, just to uh, quickly before to piggyback what, what the chief was talking about, uh, one one big one is was we just had a firefighter retire with injury. He was out all year. Mm, That's what right. that was. a That was a, a big spike in that. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple yeah. injuries off on training. But that was that was actually the big spike because now it's spiking down as I'm yeah. doing it this year. After That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the big spike, though. Um, OK, thank you. That helps. Mm hmm. Yep. Thank you. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. No problem, Chief. Um, so uh, just a, a ongoing projects, our stational learning system upgrade. Um, we've we're we're still doing our final testing. They found they found a basically one bug, and they're they're making sure everything is is ironed out before um, we 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 do the station integration. But we're looking at um, hopefully it's hopefully they said that they they believe they've isolated the issue. So we're talking, you know, probably about hopefully it's April. You know, I'm going to say that we can get the uh, system working, but it's actually a good delay because we're doing the radio system and it's actually better for us to not do both at once. I think I think it's working out better. We're ironing out all the radio stuff. Um, as as I said in B, we have the new system going. We're, we're on the state system. Um, there's there's as expected, as happened with PD, there's definitely some some bugs and we're we're working with Norcom to uh do some reprogramming and 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 all minor stuff, but 
the actual coverage and the system itself is operating as well as expected. So that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a, it's been very successful. Yeah, um, I think uh, the police department said there was uh, something that they noticed that if the officer doesn't start speaking too quickly before holding the button and you hold the button in for a second in order to get it online and then you speak, I think they were starting to have some of their conversations, uh, the beginning of the conversation not being heard because they started speaking too quickly. Yeah, we're, we're having, yeah, exactly. It's just some, there's just some different um, ways it works. And with us, it's more, we have our fire ground channels, which operate differently and we're just getting used to it. And we're getting some feedback uh, of our repeaters that are on each vehicle. So we're just, it's, it's probably a programming thing, but Norcom's aware of it, but it's, it's those little things I, that we have to, uh, you know, iron out. But, it's good but the, the repeaters are on each vehicle because that was always a problem. Yes, exactly. And but but now it's getting used to having them. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's another it's another step, right? Mm -hmm. But it, but it is. It's all it's all an upgrade. So everything is operating well. The, and the coverage itself, which is the best part, is we we have coverage all over the city now, and and which you know we had our our spots. So that that is has definitely been um, remedied, which is great. Mm -hmm. Good. So for an update on the buildings, um, I actually, for the station one apparatus floor that I, I mentioned last week, um, that we have some, we well, quite a bit of movement in the floor around the whole floor that seems to be settling underneath. I met with, um, I had met with Bill Ireland for building department and he, he, he wanted me to obviously look at further, felt that it was more emergency type work. Um, so I, I met with the geotechnical engineer, GZN, on um Friday, last Friday, and we we walk through, and he's gonna he's gonna develop a scope of work. We're gonna just try to do one. We're gonna make basically get an exploratory hole to see the damage, to see where where we're at, and and then I'll I'll be able to get a, a you know a better idea of the scope of work necessary to to fix the floor there. So um, hopefully that that we'll we'll be getting that in the next month or so, and and get get them rolling. So for, for the uh, station three apparatus floor. Uh, I actually just received word today. They're, they're, uh, the engineer is almost done with with the preliminary designs. Um, hopefully, we'll be meeting, you know, sometime next week and start to go over it. Once we get the design, then I'm going to put out an RFP for a contractor to do the work, and we'll. Uh, but I'll keep you updated on on how that goes. He he did say it's uh, he wanted to spend a little more time on the drawing because it's 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 such an old building. It's a little more complex and he wanted to make sure he's got everything, everything right. Uh, station five, the bathroom, it's, it's basically complete. There was a back order on one last stall, unfortunately. So we are waiting on that, but um, everything's come out. I was, I was waiting to, I'll, I'll uh, hopefully be able to, that'll be done. And I'll be able to post picture. I'll, I'll put pictures for the next meeting. So you can see uh, the finished product on it. it. It came out really good. I think they, they did a nice job. Uh, any any questions? No questions. Nope. Not for me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Assistant Fire Chief of Operations, Assistant Chief McCabe. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, under operations, uh, items A and B in your report were two structure fires that we've had in the city since our last commission meeting. Uh, the first one was at 9 Park Street, uh, 1248 a.m. in a uh, 68 unit four story apartment building. Uh, so the, the fire was on the first floor, which filled the building uh, with smoke. Uh, therefore, the incident commander requested second and third alarm companies to the scene right away. And firefighters were able to successfully evacuate uh, all personnel, all, all the people living in that building uh, while also containing the fire. Uh, the second structure fire was at 9 William Street, uh, which was in a single family house. That fire was contained to the kitchen in the hallway on the first floor. Uh, and there's additional details in your in your written report on those incidents. Um, credit goes to all the firefighters uh, at those two fires. Uh, they did an excellent job as always, and no injuries were reported. Item C, uh, as uh, Chief Conti mentioned, we're onto the new uh, state radio system now. And um, working with AC Conti and with the shift commanders, uh, getting uh, feedback from the officers regarding drawing up SOPs uh, for that radio system. So once we, we settle in and get the best practices for the new technology, we'll be putting those into SOP uh, form. And item D, our three new recruits continue to progress at the uh, Connecticut Fire Academy. Uh, we received their first set of reviews this week, uh, which were very good. 
And we heard that two of them have uh, been elected squad leaders by their peers, which is always a very good sign. So they continue to do well. Uh, and we have additional interviews planned um, uh, for some uh, laterals, which will come uh, later in this month. And hopefully we'll be able to roll some laterals into that class in late May when they come on shift. As far as calls for the month of February, we had 544 incidents, uh, averaging just over 18 per day average. Uh, we had 11 fires, including those two building fires, 35 rescues, 32 of them uh, being uh, motor vehicle accidents. We responded to 322 EMS calls, 30 hazardous conditions, nine service calls, 88 fire alarms, and 49 good intent. So for the year 2024 so far, we're at 1,232 incidents and 1,884 total responses. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, I have none. No questions. Uh, good job. Thanks uh, to uh, the entire staff for uh, making this a successful uh, report. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, Fire Marshal's report. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Fire right, Marshal Saw Sawyer. For the month of February, um, we had 245 inspections, 30 notifications, three pub ed events, 15 plan reviews were completed, liquor license, five, fire investigations, two, and one issue with code for general hazards. $700 in plan review fees and $325 in liquor license fees for a total of $1,025. And that is it. Yeah. How's the staffing level for your division? Is it up? Uh, uh, we're, you have... we're, we're still down to one um, part-time guy. Troy Donahue is uh, currently in the fire investigation. Uh, Jim Coach, he should be um, online for code. Uh, probably by the end of the month, um, hopefully. Um, we also, by the end of the month, we will have um, completed nearly 1,000 individual dwelling unit inspections of the larger complexes. So that's something that um, we're charting new territory um, with getting into every dwelling unit. I spoke to Hartford, Danbury, um, Stanford, and New Haven, and um, very difficult to do that. Now, an interesting thing I found out with Hartford, um, they started a new fee schedule where they charge for the individual dwelling units. And um, based on that, they hired 17 inspectors. Uh, Danbury's been charging $25 per dwelling unit for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if NOLA can reach that, but um, it's definitely a, a, a lot and a little incentive to get more people if we're putting money in the coffers. That's all I got. Do we charge? No, we do not charge for... Oh, do not charge. We, we do not charge for individual dwelling unit inspections. Oh. Uh, the, the health department does... Um, there's a, a $60 fee to register as a multifamily. Um, that's a charge that, the only charge that I can see that um, the multifamilies receive. Mm -hmm. okay. That's something you may want to take a look at and maybe make some recommendations. Yes, I'm, I'm all over that like a clingy leisure suit. I'm working with Hartford to see how they got there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that with existing, but going forward with some of the um, new dwelling units, we may be able to do that. I've got to talk to legal as well. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Marshall. Well, my pleasure. Hey, Mr. Luca, the uh, emergency management report. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so actually going back to um, the multifamily fires that Chief McCabe mentioned, uh, we do get the regular reports from Red Cross for the assistance that they provide. So if there's any referrals needed or any additional services, um, Alexis and her team is pretty good about letting us know and staying in contact after the fires so we know um, the service that's been given. 
And Mayor, I think you're on that list as well. Okay. Um, and then just really focusing on some of the ongoing planning. Um, things, again, due to the state. Uh, there is going to be a statewide disaster exercise in, I believe, May um, that will focus on election security. So I have reached out to town clerk and the registrars of voters, as well as a few others, just to have that as a placeholder so they can save the date. Um, we may do it again as a region or um, as a municipality. We're still trying to figure out um, what towns want to do and what's the easiest way going forward. Uh, last month, uh, Deputy Chief Capola, myself, and Lieutenant Lyons uh, actually took one of the ICS 300 classes um, that's pretty hard to come by. So that was a regional offering. Um, and then we're signed up for ICS 400, I want to say next month. Um, so again, that's where some of the benefit of doing some of these classes that are harder to get. Um, and then the REPT, the region has been paying for those classes. So it's at no cost to us um, to take them. Um, and then looking forward, again, summer safety, some spring safety, um, updating the website um, to make sure everything's current. Um, and then I have had some conversation with the health department about maybe doing some regular meetings with those of us or those departments that are more involved in climate impact. So health department for heat, us, probably parks and rec, public works for flooding, just to have some more ongoing meetings at the, um, I guess, more boots on the ground level to talk about some of the things that we're seeing, um, possible solutions, and just to really keep on top of weather and really the impact on residents, especially the more vulnerable residents in the city. So hopefully maybe starting that up in, I wanna say maybe April or May, um, again, if there's no objection to moving forward with that. I think, again, a lot of us are impacted um, and seeing some of the results. So again, if we can kind of keep on top of it, coordinate a little bit better, especially as more of the funding becomes available and different grants, we may be able to get creative. Yep. Thank you. Michelle. Okay, thank you. Any questions, Commissioner? Uh, no, none, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luca. Okay, now we have the uh, Training Division Report, Deputy Chief Coppola. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioner Struge. Um, yeah. So uh, some of the items that are on my uh, agenda this month, currently uh, we're doing a lot of new driver pump operator training due to the fact that our uh, the last hires that were hired nine months ago are um, all doing extremely well uh, and they are all moving on to driver training. So uh, stations one and two, particularly have the most of those um those personnel so they're doing a lot of uh a lot, a lot of field especially with the weather breaking now a lot of field work on uh pump operating flowing lines uh, and also driving uh apparatus um truck one has been doing a lot of driver training being that they have the refurbished tiller um so they're getting a lot of good hands-on um again with the weather cooperating early this spring we're getting out and doing a lot of outside stuff uh we just finished a uh delivery of the mental wellness program with the fairfield county trauma recovery network uh team and they brought in speakers for all four shifts to come in and talk to the um especially some of the newer people that weren't really exposed to the program uh early on they were all uh given an overview of the program and then each day there was a different subject matter expert in to talk to them about different things like uh, addiction sleep uh, relationships uh, dealing with uh, uh, post-traumatic stress injury and things like that um, with the new um, re with the refurbished tiller coming in we want to make sure we keep on the schedule uh, training for the spare area which is unlike the two areas we have in service being that they're both tillers so we're making sure that everyone stays sharp on the spare area in case it needs to go into service for any reason um 
and we've been doing a lot. The rescue company has been doing a lot with vehicle extrication and stabilization. Um, and we have some training coming up uh, that I just closed. Um, I just closed out all the planning on with Norwalk EMS uh, to kind of uh, orient them on how we operate at motor vehicle accidents, especially ones that have critical injuries and uh, occupants trapped in vehicles. So that's currently, there's a lot more um, happening completed. Uh, as Michelle DeLuca said, we completed ICS 300. It was a three-day program held at Fairfield uh, Fire School um, with the three people, myself, Michelle, and uh, Lieutenant Lyons. We were able to use the Hatch and Bailey Lumberyard site for some really, really good training. I actually uh, submitted a short photo gallery for, mm -hmm. you, for, uh, for your review. Um, on that and some of the operations that we did, we, we did roof work, um, we did cutting roll up doors, uh, the engine companies did hose stretching. It was, it was a really awesome opportunity that we don't get that often. Um, we just, uh, we completed the radio system training for all personnel in the department, uh, tagging on to what Mar uh, Chief Conti was saying. And we also um, completed our EMS recertification classes uh, we had 76 members recertified for two years, and that took up a lot of the training time. So that's completed now, and um, we don't have to worry about that again until 2025. Uh, upcoming, uh, I have uh, several things going on with the bridge construction project, uh, the walk bridge construction project. Uh, we're working on a confined space drill with Middlesex Construction at that site. Uh, they want to do a water rescue drill with us and our marine unit. Um, we, they want to bring somebody uh, off of the bridge structure onto a boat uh, as a rescue. So we're in planning processes for that. And we're also going to um, give them uh, some extinguisher training. I'm doing that. I'm helping um, and Deputy Fire Marshal Jack Kelly is going to be doing that with me. Uh, scheduled for early April. Uh, we're going to be starting our physical soon uh, with Hartford Healthcare, um, our new medical provider. Um, our physicals begin with a uh, blood draw, and the blood draw is scheduled for April 1st and 3rd and 8th, uh, of, which is only a few weeks away. Uh, there's a hazardous materials technician class going on right now. It's a 140-hour hazardous materials technician program being held at the Fairfield Fire School. Uh, Lieutenant Jim Lyons and Firefighter Edwin Augusto are currently enrolled in taking the class. And again, like um, Michelle DeLuca said, we were taking ICS 400. Uh, that class is 415 and 416, 2024. And that'll be myself, Firefighter Pete Chilla, and Michelle uh, will be in that class. And then uh, the class we have for pump operators, state certification class, is scheduled for... Um, for May, end of May, three days into May, three days beginning of June. We have two host seats that are given to us free of charge. Uh, and we have those seats filled with two of our newer pump operators who are going to become certified uh, at the state level. And uh, the class is full. Uh, so it's going to run um, with uh, a lot of people in it. So uh, that's my report for this month. If there's any questions on anything that uh, I outlined, I would be happy to answer them. Also, let the record show that uh, Commissioner Paskind has joined us at uh, 321, I believe, something like that. So yeah, we can enter that into the minutes. Uh, any questions for uh, Deputy Chief uh, Coppola? Uh, no questions. As always, a great, uh, complete uh, report. Thank you for the photos. It's amazing to see our, our men and women actively at, at work, uh, training in, in real life situations. Thank you. You're welcome. Almost, Thank it's you. almost like being there. <laughs> Thank you. Your past kind, any questions? Uh, no, no, I'm glad to be here and uh, sorry that I was late, everybody. Thank you for these reports. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deputy Chief Coppola. Again, like I said, like the commissioner acknowledged a lot happening in the training division. The, the more training we can do, the better. Um, you, just a question for Middlesex uh, construction. Um, the, Perhaps it might be nice if um, they had some conversations relative to making a donation to the fire department for all the uh, uh, things that you're doing for them. I don't know if that's something that uh, has been discussed or has been offered, but uh, it looks like you're spending a lot of time helping them out or working with them. 
Yeah, that that's absolutely something that I can approach them on. There is some stuff that they want to do. The the thing is, we are we are very well equipped for for some of the drills that they want us to do. So um, there is definite um, items that we can maybe propose to them that they can upgrade what we have currently uh, for some of the for some of that training. Uh, yeah, because of the yeah, you know the, the boat the fire boat uses gas and yeah. you use a lot of your time and, and a lot of firefighters time. So yeah, uh, it might be, might be something they can help uh, just help you with. Sure. I'll explore that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything other than, well, no local 830, no old business, no new business, no correspondence uh, under personnel. We have firefighter deployment. Uh, Chief, are you going to handle that? Um, yeah. So I just want to bring to your attention uh, one of the firefighters <clears throat> who's in the Connecticut Army National Guard is being um, deployed, I believe, to officer training um, beginning April 19th all the way through September 6th of this year. So he will be um, on duty going through that training that whole time for at least six mm -hmm. months. Yeah, it's... Uh, I know there's a uh, an organization called ESGR. I think it's called Employee Employer Support of Guard and Reserve, and uh, you might want to reach out to them because when we do have uh, uh, some of our employees uh, deployed, uh, they will uh, take you on a tour of some of their facilities, and it's rather interesting some of the th things they do. So oh. I, I I went on a tour with them several years ago. Hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so now it looks like I need a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion, uh, future hiring and station four project. Uh, so moved. A move by Commissioner uh, Destruge. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going into executive session at 3.32 p.m. After we come out of executive session, we will come back into this session uh, and... Um, and discuss whatever we can so so we can okay. leave this and uh, go into executive session very good nice day folks okay the time is 3 55 p.m uh we are back in public session during executive session no motions were made no votes were taken if I can have a motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Motion to adjourn <laughs> at 356 <laughs> by Co Commissioner Destruge. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned at 356. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Linda. Are you emailing the PowerPoint or do you want us to stick around to watch the PowerPoint? Um, if, if if you want me to, uh, we can we can stay on and we can I can just present it if you'd like if that's better or we can or do you want to be just if you want Mark you know we can set up a link we can set up a call with with everybody and then I can just do the presentation on there if that's better for you. Uh, you mean including the mayor, so we'd have to get on his schedule. Okay. Um, sure. Do do you have it available on? Uh, I do. I can send it I mean, to you in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. Do, yeah, why don't we do that? Oh, definitely. I'm going, and then I'm we going can to stop right now. The meeting. I'm going to stop right now. The meeting. Okay. Hold on for a second, Linda. So uh, no. what I'll do is I'll send it. I'll send it over to you. Uh, I'll email it to everybody so we, you can at least look at it. And then if there's questions, we can go over it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.